Today we will talk about lipoproteins, which are the main transporters of lipids through the bloodstream towards the peripheral tissues. The objectives for today are for you to know the structure and function of uh, lipoproteins, to differentiate between the different types, the four different types of lipoproteins in terms of composition and function, uh, and to understand how they are classified, uh, to be able to explain the different, um, metabol uh, the different uh, metabolisms of lipoproteins. Uh, we're talking here about exogenous uh, lipoprotein metabolism, which pertains to chylomicrons, endogenous, which pertains to VLDL, and reverse cholesterol metabolism, which pertains to HDL. Also, we will be talking about a few lipoprotein disorders, uh, and uh, mostly uh, I'm hoping for you to understand the mechanism that underlies uh, the formation of uh, atheromes. As I mentioned before, lipoproteins are the main transporter of lipids through the bloodstream. Uh, basically, they are a very efficient way of, trans uh, of transporting highly hydrophobic molecules, uh, whether it's cholesterol or triglycerides or phospholipids, through the bloodstream towards the tissues where they are actually needed and uh, uh, processed. They also maintain the lipid solubility uh, in the plasma. So basically, as you can see in this cartoon, uh, they can act like a boat that transports all those highly hydrophobic molecules to where they need to be, into an aqueous solution. All lipoproteins are basically spherical micromolecule complexes. However, they differ. Uh, not in terms of their composition, but in terms of their, uh, the percentage of each of the components that is highly specific to each type of lipoprotein. They all have the same two uh, major components, the amphipatic shell, which is composed primarily of phospholipids, free cholesterol, and uh, uh, proteins, which are called apoproteins which are very specific to the type of lipoprotein that they pertain to. And uh, a an hydrophobic lipid core, which is composed of very hydrophobic molecules, such as triacylglycerol and cholesterol esters. Apoproteins are very specific to each type of lipoprotein. Basically, they are almost defining the, the type of proteins, that the lipoproteins that are they are on. There are four major classes of apoproteins, A, B, C, and E. There is no D here, and most of them have multiple subclasses. There are two different types of apoproteins, one that is uh, essential and integ uh, an integral part of the lipoprotein. It does not uh, get transferred from one lipoprotein to a different lipoprotein. And the other one, uh, the other type, is the transferred type, uh, which basically gets uh, transferred from one molecule to another one, depending on the needs. Uh, these types are usually the ones from class, e, class C and E, which get, get usually transferred from HDL to VLDL and chylomicrons, and vice versa, depending on what's needed. They play different roles. Uh, the major and most obvious one is carrier of um, uh, the, micro the, the uh, lipid contents through the bloodstream. Uh, they also play a role of coenzymes um, when it comes to, uh, for example, C2, APOC2, which is a coenzyme for lipoprotein lipase. Um, and also they play a role as ligands. Uh, for example, APOE uh, e and APOB100, which are both ligands for the LDL receptor which we will be talking about later. Let's go over the major classes of lipoproteins, and uh, specifically the types of lipoproteins that I'm hoping for you to remember. First, APOE. APOE is synthesized in the liver and intestine, and it is an integral protein for HDL. It is a strong activator of lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, which we will be talking about a little bit later. APOB100 and APOB48 are two 
apoproteins that are encoded by the same gene, ApoB, uh, and are produced by uh, uh, a process that is called RNA editing in different tissues. ApoB100 is synthesized in the liver, uh, and it is an integral protein for VLDL, IDL, and LDL. To remember that all uh, lipoproteins have only one copy of this apoprotein, and LDL has only ApoB100 as apoprotein. There's no other apoproteins on LDL. ApoB100 is a ligand for the LDL receptor. Uh, now let's see what the, the, the other protein that is pr produced by the same uh, gene is. ApoB48 is synthesized in the intestine and it is present only on chylomicron. This is the truncated form uh, of ApoB100. However, unlike ApoB100, it does not bind to the LDL receptor. Now let's take a look at the process by which these two, uh, these two molecules are formed. It all starts with the same apoprotein B gene, which is transcribed into an mRNA. Uh, in the liver, the mRNA has in a certain position a cytosine, uh, therefore allowing for the translation of the full protein, which is ApoB100. However, in the intestine, this cytosine here gets deaminated into a uracil. The next two nucleotides after the uracil are two Adenosine, so you're gonna end up, we're gonna end up with a stop codon uh, right here, UAA, meaning that the translated uh, portion of the protein will be from the 5' prime uh, untranslated region to the stop codon, uh, producing a truncated version of the protein. Basically, only 40% of the entire protein gets uh, formed, hence the name ApoB48. ApoE is another important apoprotein. It is present basically on most of the uh, LP, uh, lipoproteins except for LDL, and it is a high affinity ligand for the LDL receptor. So let's take a look at the classification of different lipoproteins. You can see that they go from chylomicron to very low density lipoprotein, uh, low density lipoprotein, and high density lipoproteins. Basically, their density uh, increases in the opposite direction from their size. What that means is these chylomicrons they're usually full of triglycerides and cholesterol esters. So they're, they have, they're highly hydrophobic, they have a lot of fat in them, fat flows, uh, floats, so that means that their density is very low. However, that makes them very fluffy and big, so their size is very big. Uh, going further, you can see that their size decreases because in, in, in HDL, uh, HDL basically has very little uh, triglycerides and cholesterol, very little fat, and a lot of protein, which makes it very heavy, sinking, that means that the density is high, and the size becomes smaller. So you can see that the size and the density of lipoproteins are basically in op going, go basically in opposite directions. This is an overview of the lipoprotein metabolism. Basically, we're looking at three major components of the lipoprotein metabolism. First is the exogenous metabolism carried on by chylomicrons, which takes lipids from the intestine, basically the dietary fat, uh, and transports it to the, uh, to the peripheral tissues. The other, uh, the second metabolism is the endogenous metabolism, which transports fat that has been produced in the liver by VLDL into the peripheral tissues. And the third one is the reverse cholesterol uh, pathway, which basically transports cholesterol from the peripheral tissue to the liver and is carried out by HDL. Let's start talking a bit about each one of the lipoproteins individually. First, we'll start with the chylomicrons. 
Chitomicrons uh, have the lowest density and the largest size. The low density comes from the high percentage of triglycerides uh, that are in the center of the in their core. Uh, their apoproteins are ApoB48, which we said that is specific to chitomicrons, ApoC, and ApoE. They're synthesized in the intestinal cells, uh, and their function is to transport dietary fats from the intestine to the peripheral tissues and the liver. Um, what's specific about them is the fact that they give that milky appearance to plasma about an hour after ingestion of a high-fat meal. Let's talk about the metabolism of chylomicrons. It represents the exogenous pathway for lipid metabolism, and it all starts in the small intestine with the production of ApoB48 by enterocytes. Around the ApoB48, uh, there are, uh, a lot of triacylglycerols are accumulating and they're forming these nascent chylomicrons, which are released into the lymphatic system and from there on into the bloodstream. In the bloodstream, they uh, acquire two other apoproteins, C2 and E, from HDL, and they form a mature chylomicron, which has lots of triacylglycerols and three apoproteins, B48, C2, and E. These mature chylomicrons travel through the bloodstream to the peripheral tissue, specifically to the adipose tissue, muscle, and mammary gland, uh, which, uh, especially during the periods of lactation. So what happens in the capillaries? APOC2 acts as a coenzyme for lipoprotein lipase, which is in charge of hydrolyzing triacylglycerols uh, from chylomicrons. Uh, triacylglycerols are degraded into their basic components, fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids are used depending on the tissue that they're in, um, either as storage in the adipose tissue or as uh, uh, energy in uh, muscles, and glycerol is transported back into the liver where it can participate in the production of more uh, triglycerides or in the uh, glucose metabolism. Once they have stripped off their uh, triacylglycerols, uh, the chylomicrons then shed their APOC2, they give it back to the HDL, and they form uh, their smaller version called uh, chylomicrons, which have uh, more cholesterol than triacylglycerols, and only two apoproteins, ApoE and ApoB48. Uh, they retain the ApoE because it is the uh, ligand for the LDL receptor. Uh, LDL receptors are in high quantities on um, the cells, uh, on the hepatocytes, and uh, uh, help in the uh, endocytosis of chylomicrons into uh, the liver cells. This is the written version of everything that I have told you in the previous slide. Uh, you can either use this or the other one or a combination of both when you're studying. Let's move on to the next uh, lipoprotein, class of lipoproteins, the very low density lipoprotein, which is in charge of the endogenous pathway uh, for lipid metabolism. Uh, they have less triacylglycerols than uh, chylomicrons, and hence their density is, uh, is a little bit uh, higher than that of chylomicrons. They have three apoproteins that are characteristics for, characteristic for them, ApoB100, uh, ApoC, and ApoE. Uh, their synthesis occurs in the hepatic cells, in the hepatocytes, and it usually happens after uh, meals that are very rich in uh, carbohydrates, uh, and uh, their, uh, their production is insulin-dependent. Uh, their major function is to transport endogenous fats, endogenous triacylglycerols produced into the, uh, in the liver to the peripheral tissues, uh, specifically to uh, adipose tissue and muscles. Let's take a look at the metabolism of VLDL, which represents the endogenous metabolism of lipids. It all starts in the liver, with ApoB100 being synthesized by hepatocytes. Triacylglycerols aggregate around ApoB100. 
which uh, uh, form the nascent VLDL. Uh, nascent VLDL are, are then transported through the portal vein into the bloodstream, where they acquire APOC2 and APOE from HDL. They form this mature version um, of VLDL, which has all three apoproteins, um, B100, C2, and E. In that shape, they, trans uh, they travel through the bloodstream into the capillaries of the peripheral tissues, where, where there are, they are acted uh, on by lipoprotein lipase, which is in charge of degrading uh, triacylglycerols into free fatty acids and glycerol. Basically, you can see here that everything that um, happened until now is very similar to the metabolism of chylomicrons, with the exception that in the chylomicron case, uh, they start in the intestine versus VLDL, which start in the liver. So they, the, the, uh, the only difference is the uh, origin of the fats that they're transporting. Once they have shredded their triglyceride content, uh, the VLDL are becoming way smaller uh, and they're forming this um, smaller version of themselves, uh, IDL intermediate, um, in intermediate, uh, um, um, intermediate density lipoproteins, which then can uh, uh, shed um, their uh, APOC2, which has already served its purpose. Uh, and uh, it can, uh, they can uh, be either returning to their, uh, to their, uh, to the liver, uh, and bind to the LDL receptor due to the uh, APOE that they still retain, or they can shed both of the APOC2 and APOE. Uh, they form this little version of themselves, uh, which are called uh, LDLs, uh, low density lipoproteins. Um, and low-density lipoproteins can still bind to the LDL receptor through the APOB100, which has lower affinity for the receptor than APOE. What happens in this continuous, the continuum from VLDL to LDL, uh, at some point, um, VLDL can enter into an exchange process with HDL, uh, basically, VLDL have lots of triacylglycerols, HDL have lo uh, lots of cholesterol esters, so they s basically swap. Uh, VLDL is giving triacylglycerols to HDL, and HDL gives back uh, cholesterol esters uh, in a process that is catalyzed by an enzyme called cholesterol ester, uh, ester transfer protein, CETP. With this molecule, uh, with this transfer, uh, basically the size of the VLDL can decrease as well, and they form LDL. The third class of lipoproteins is the low-density lipoproteins, LDLs. They carry about 70% of the total plasmatic cholesterol. They're smaller in size, and they have only one apoprotein on them, ApoB100. Their synthesis occurs in the circulation, in the, uh, in the metabolism of VLDL, as we have seen in the previous slides, and they are uh, transporting free cholesterol from the liver to the peripheral tissues um, in order to regenerate their membranes or to the uh, endocrine tissues to form steroid hormones or to the kidney to form vitamin D. The metabolism of LDL is different from what we've seen for VLDL and uh, chylomicrons. LDL has this apoprotein, ApoB100, which is recognized by the LDL receptor on all cells. Uh, LDL receptor is residing in clusters on the cell surface, uh, and these clusters are coated by a protein called clathrin, forming this clathrin-coated pits. Once the LDL receptor binds to ApoB100, the entire LDL molecule is engulfed into a clathrin coated vesicle, which is endocytosed into the cytosol, where it loses the coat, the clathrin coat, and forms an endosome. Uh, endosomes then fuse with lysosomes. Uh, however, the, before that happens, the receptor, the LDL receptor, buds off uh, and it returns back to the cell surface where it can be recycled. 
Uh, what happens in the lysosome then uh, is the fact that the lipoprotein gets degraded into its main con uh, components, uh, such as uh, free cholesterol, uh, fatty acids, and phospholipids, and the lysosomal, pr lysosomal proteases are uh, degrading the ApoB100 into uh, basic amino acids. The free cholesterol produced by degradation of LDL in the lysosome gets released into the cytosol, and the cell can use it for current needs. However, not all free cholesterol gets used by the cell, and whatever is left, combined with whatever is derived from the chylomicron remnants, they all affect the uh, cellular cholesterol pool by changing the rates of cholesterol synthesis or uptake of cholesterol into the peripheral cells. And this works by two different ways. Uh, one, high cholesterol levels are uh, decreasing the transcription of HMG-CoA reductase, the rate-limiting enzyme in the biosynthesis process, uh, or accelerating its degradation, thus blocking the formation of new cholesterol. Uh, the other way is by uh, blocking the uh, uptake of new cholesterol in the cell uh, by inhibiting the synthesis of new LDL receptors, which, which are not capable of bringing more cholesterol in. However, the cholesterol, the free cholesterol that is already in the cell needs to be dealt with, and the enzyme that does that is the acyl-CoA uh, cholesterol acyl transferase, ACAT for short, uh, which converts free cholesterol into cholesterol esters, which can be used uh, as storage or can, they can be uptaken by new uh, lipoproteins. Uh, and, uh, however, they don't contribute, they don't impact in any way the cholesterol pool, um, so they don't impact the synthesis of new cholesterol or the uptake of more cholesterol in the cell. This is a process that works for the majority of the cells in the body. However, there is an exception to this, uh, and that happens in macrophages. Macrophages, instead of using an LDL receptor, they use a specific kind of receptor, which is a scavenger receptor class A, a non-specific receptor that binds to a wide variety of ligands, uh, and in this case, it binds to um, the it binds to um, ligands on the uh, oxidized LDL and facilitate the endocytosis of oxidized LDL. Um, in certain circumstances, when LDL are subjected to reactive oxidate, uh, oxygen species, it becomes oxidized uh, and uh, very toxic for the cells, thus it needs to be removed by, by cells from the uh, immune system. These scavenger um, receptors, however, not, do not respond to high intracellular uh, cholesterol levels, uh, and uh, they don't decrease their synthesis based on that, uh, and therefore the uptake of cholesterol into the cell continues, although the cholesterol levels in the cell are, uh, are already high. Uh, therefore, uh, the cholesterol keeps accumulated into, accumulating into the macrophages and results in uh, the transform their transformation into these huge cells full of lipids that are called uh, foam cells. We have finally reached the fourth class of uh, lipoproteins, high-density lipoproteins, which, as their name says, they have a high percentage of proteins, which makes them really small and really dense. However, they have a large percentage of cholesterol and cholesterol esters as well. Uh, the apoproteins that are integral parts of them are the ones from class A. They are essential. Uh, they also have apoproteins uh, from class C and E. However, those are being transferred to and from um, VLDL and chylomicrons. When they're formed, uh, high-density lipoproteins have a disc shape of uh, form. Uh, however, the more cholesterol they accumulate, the rounder they become and the bigger they become, and they, that's how they mature. Uh, their site of synthesis is basically uh, in the circulation. However, the originators, the, the original uh, apoproteins that uh, are necessary for their formation are synthesized either in the liver or in the intestine. Uh, you don't need to remember which one is which, uh, just remember that the APO class A are synthesized in the liver and in the intestine. 
Their function is basically to accumulate uh, more and more free cholesterol and cholesterol esters uh, by interacting with uh, the peripheral tissues and the other um, lipoproteins and to remove the excess of cholesterol. The cholesterol that is not used by the cell uh, to remove it from the cell uh, and bring it back to the liver uh, which can then recirculate it and use it for uh, bile salts production. Let's take a look at the metabolism of HDL. HDL are being produced in the circulation. However, they accumulate around um, apoproteins from class A, which are synthesized in the liver and in the intestine. Their initial form, the nascent form, is this quid shaped. However, the more, uh, uh, the more cholesterol they accumulate, the rounder they become. They accumulate usually free cholesterol from the peripheral tissues. However, before storing it, they convert it into cholesterol esters with the help of an enzyme called uh, lecithin cholesterol uh, acetyl transferase, uh, which is synthesized by the liver. Uh, when they accumulate uh, cholesterol esters, they also receive um, an, another two apoproteins, apoprotein C1 and apoprotein E, and they give rise to this molecule called now HDL3. HDL3 can accumulate even more cholesterol from, esterified cholesterol from the tissues, uh, and they become even larger molecules, which are called now HDL2. HDL2 uh, then bind to the VLDL receptors on the liver through APOE, uh, and they basically dump their cargo, their uh, uh, cholesterol cargo, uh, into the liver, and the liver can return it into the bile circulation. There is a parallel pathway that also occurs in which HDL, HDL2, uh, can basically enter an exchange uh, with VLDL, in which VLDL gives HDL uh, triacylglycerols, and in exchange, HDL can give cholesterol esters to VLDL. Cholesterol, uh, VLDL then can bring its own uh, cholesterol esters to the liver by binding to LDL receptor. Now that we've seen how HDL are being processed in the circulation, let's take a look at their major functions. The first one we have already mentioned. That uh, and is the exchange of apoproteins between HDL and different other lipoproteins, such as VLDL and chylomicrons. Basically, think of HDL as being a bank that lends um, APOC2 and E to VLDL and chylomicrons, and these ones, when they're done using the apoproteins that they have uh, picked up, they give them back to HDL, which stores them. The second function of HDL is that of uh, an exchange between free cholesterol and cholesterol esters. Basically, HDL have the capability of picking up free cholesterol from the cells and esterifying it with the use of LCAT. Those cholesterol esters then uh, get stored into the uh, HDL, which brings them to the liver and delivers them to the liver, which can then use them for bile salt synthesis. The third a uh, major function for HDL is the reverse cholesterol transport, basically uh, saying that cholesterol that is unused in the cells, instead of being uh, deposited in the cells and damaging uh, the tissues, it gets picked up by HDL and brought back to, um, to the liver, uh, which can then uh, use it for bile salt synthesis. Basically, you have to think of HDL as being like a sanitizer that gets rid of all the cholesterol that is not needed and can be damaging uh, and uh, brings it to the liver, which can make use of it. And in that way, it becomes a protective factor against atherosclerosis. Um, cholesterol esters can also be taken up as on their own by the liver through the scavenger receptor class B, which is a different type of scavenger receptor than the one that we've talked about uh, for macrophages, which is the scavenger receptor class A. Let's do a summary of all the lipoproteins that we have discussed. First, 
uh, very low density lipoproteins uh, are transporting lipids from the uh, liver to the peripheral tissues. The more cargo they lose, they go through an intermediate form uh, as IDLs, and they lose even more uh, triacylglycerols, and they become low density lipoproteins. Low, de low density lipoproteins basically deliver cholesterol to the peripheral tissues for the cells to use for their own means. The opposite process uh, is done by uh, HDLs, which basically are picking the leftover cholesterol from the peripheral tissues and bring it back to the liver, which puts it back into the bile salt circulation. And chylomicrons, which are the biggest and the lowest density of all lipoproteins, are the ones in charge of transporting dietary fats uh, from, the in, uh, from the intestine to the peripheral tissues. In an overview of the metabolism, uh, you have to keep in mind that there are three parallel processes. Uh, first is an exogenous uh, transport pathway, uh, which is mediated by chylomicrons, which transports dietary fats from the intestine to the liver. Uh, an endogenous uh, pathway, which transports fats that are produced uh, endogenously into the liver to the peripheral tissues. And then there's a third, there's a third pa uh, transportation of uh, cholesterol from the peripheral tissues through HDL back into the liver. So basically, as a take-home message, you need to remember that uh, chylomicrons and VLDL are transporting uh, triacylglycerols either from diet to the peripheral tissues or from the liver to the peripheral tissues. And LDL and HDL are transporting cholesterol, one from the, from the liver to the peripheral tissues, the other one from the peripheral tissues to the liver. There are a few uh, disorders that are associated with uh, defects in lipoproteins, and they can be classified in two different categories. First is the primary type, uh, which are inherited, and they're due to genetic defects in uh, one of the, um, in either the metabolism, transportation, or degradation of this uh, lipoproteins. They result in either hypo or hypolipidemias. And the second category is that of uh, secondary uh, lipoprotein disorders. Uh, these ones are usually multigenic. They are multifactorial. Multiple genes and environments are contributing. The environment are contributing to their uh, etiology, and usually they're due to a primary disease, whether that is diabetes, hypothyroidism, uh, nephrotic syndrome. And uh, instead of having just hyper or hypolipidemia, they have an aberrant, um, aberrant uh, lipoprotein panel. So some of the uh, lipoproteins can be increased, some of them can be decreased. In this figure, you can see that there are different steps at which, um, at which defects in the lipoprotein metabolism can occur. Uh, one is at the level of the lipoprotein lipase, uh, another one is at the level of the LDL receptor. Other ones are at the level of um, LCAT. So let's take a look at each one of them individually. Let's take a look at a few mutations that lead to disorders in the lipoprotein metabolism. First is A beta lipoproteinemia, uh, which results from a genetic defect in the ApoB gene. Remember, the ApoB gene is encoding for both uh, ApoB100 uh, and ApoB48. Uh, this mutation uh, means that there's very little ApoB uh, protein produced, uh, and therefore there's not much that can transport VLDL and LDL. So you have very low levels of VLDL and LDL, and all the uh, triacylglycerols that usually are getting transported by VLDL and LDL, they're getting accumulated in the liver and intestine. That means malabsorption of fat-soluble vitamins, impaired physical and neurological growth. The other defect uh, can be in the lipoprotein lipase, or APOC2, uh, which is the coenzyme of the lipoprotein lipase. A defect in either one of them 
means that all the triacylglass rolls that are brought uh, to the peripheral tissues by VLDL or chylomicrons cannot be degraded uh, and they accumulate in the circulation. So there is a very high level of triglycerides in the circulation, which leads to abdominal pain, xanthomas, which are accumulated uh, accumulation of uh, uh, lipids under the skin, uh, and um, hepatosplenomegaly. The third uh, defect can arise in uh, in uh, ApoB100. Um, and it leads to an overproduction of this protein, uh, which means that there is a very high production of VLDL and LDL. Uh, having a high production of VLDL and uh, LDL leads to hypertriglyceremia uh, and hypercholesterolemia, uh, which leads to early cardiac disease. A fifth defect can be in the uh, LDL receptor. So basically, the LDL receptor does not recognize its ligands anymore. Uh, that can happen in the tissues or in the liver. And instead of endocyto uh, endocytosing uh, LDL, uh, LDL remains in the circulation and it, bec it becomes at increasingly high levels, with, uh, which can be uh, atherogenic and it induces early cardiovascular disease. The other mutation can occur in uh, the LCAT enzyme. So LCAT becomes uh, defective, it loses its activity, and it's uh, unable to convert free cholesterol into cholesterol esters, which are then um, uh, accepted by, and accepted and transported by HDL to the liver. Thus, cholesterol is increasing uh, in its levels in that uh, circulation, and it gets deposited into specific tissues such as cornea, uh, kidneys, erythrocytes, uh, leading eventually to kidney failure. The main pathology associated with an imbalance in lipoproteins is atherosclerosis. The atherogenic process begins with an injury in the endothelium of major blood vessels. That injury can either be caused by uh, oxidized LDL or by a different cause that allows LDL to get into the intima of the vessel, where it's subjected to the activity of reactive oxygen species and become oxidized. Oxidized LDL is highly damaging to the tissues, and it elicits an immune response in order to clear it up. The first line of response are macrophages, which have a receptor uh, that is non-specific, uh, and it allows the uptake of modified uh, LDL, such as oxidized LDL. That uh, receptor we have already talked about is the scavenger receptor class A. This allows uh, the binding uh, of the macrophages to the LDL. Uh, LDL get taken up into the cell and subjected to lysosomal degradation to their main components, the major one being cholesterol. Cholesterol accumulate, uh, accumulates into the macrophages and transforms them into these big cells full of fat that are called um, foam cells. The reason cholesterol can accumulate at such large quantities in foam cells is because the scavenger receptor is not regulated or limited uh, by the intracellular levels of cholesterol. These foam cells accumulate and they can disintegrate and elicit an even stronger response and with the accumulation of more foam cells, which form eventually a fat streak. Those uh, foam cells also release into the neighboring tissues uh, growth factors and cytokines, which trigger the proliferation of smooth muscle cells. Those most muscle cells then produce a lot of collagen, which induce the formation of a complex, uh, which is a slow-growing fibrous plaque. That plaque uh, results in a progressive occlusion of the vessel in which they reside. The fibrous plaque can be disrupted and it leads to aggregation of platelets in the form of a thrombus. The thrombus, the uh, formation of a thrombus leads to sudden occlusion of the vessel with uh, infarction in the neighboring tissues. Depending on the location of the thrombus, it can lead to cerebral infarction, myocardial infarction, renal ischemia, or uh, claudication, intermittent claudication in the lower limb if uh, the thrombus is in the femoral artery. 
This is the written overview of the entire atherogenic process. Uh, this process, in its early stages, can be reversible, uh, and it's usually done with the help of high levels of HDL. HDL is an atheroprotective uh, molecule that operates in, through three different mechanisms by uh, taking up the cholesterol from the peripheral uh, tissues and bringing it back to the liver by inhibiting adhesion molecules and thus the formation of the foam cells, and also by inhibiting the oxidation of the LDL. Uh, therefore, high levels of HDL are to be desired in order to prevent all the um, negative side effects of atherosclerosis.